I tried three of the most popular web building tools of 2024 to see which one offers the best CMS or content management system. A CMS or content management system is a way to organize, manage, and display content on your website. One of the most common use cases for a CMS is a blog. A CMS effectively allows you to create a database of content alongside a templatized page that can be populated with that database of content. So for example, if you're running a blog, you can create a database of blog posts and display them on your blog post template to populate your website with blog posts. A CMS is typically broken down into collections and items. In the case of a blog, the collection would be all of the blog posts and then the items would be the individual blog posts. So when it comes to choosing the right CMS or web builder for your project, take into account the number of items and collections that you're going to need. Beyond the number of items and the number of collections you're going to need, there's also other factors to take into account when choosing the right CMS for your project. For example, how customizable the template pages are and how much you can inject your own design elements into your blog posts or CMS items. If you design websites for your clients, Another thing to take into account is how easy it is to hand over your finalized website to your client. So one category at a time, let's take a look at which CMS performs best. So we're going to be looking at Webflow, Framer and Wix Studio to see which CMS performs best. Now we're going to start by looking at the item quota. So this is the number of individual CMS items that you can have in total. So as for all of these web builders, the number of items you're limited to will change depending on which plan you're on. So let's start with Framer. Now Framer does actually offer a really generous free plan, which allows up to a thousand CMS items across 10 collections. While this is great, the free plan doesn't allow you to connect to a custom domain. And for the vast majority of use cases is probably not the plan you're going to want, especially if you're working for your clients. Framer's first paid plan is four pounds a month when paid yearly and is specifically for a single landing page. So this won't include any CMS support, no CMS items and no CMS collections. The next plan up is basic 12 pounds a month when paid yearly, and this does support CMS. With this plan, we can have two collections and up to a thousand items. So this could be great if you're wanting to run a relatively small blog with perhaps a collection for blog posts and a collection for categories, but we are limited, as I said, to 1000 items and two collections. So any more needed, then you're going to need to upgrade to the next plan. Framer's most premium plan is the pro plan at £20 a month when paid yearly. Now this plan does allow for some more CMS items and collections. With this plan, you can have 10,000 collection items and up to 10 collections. This could work well for a slightly larger blog and just allows you to have that a little bit more flexibility if you need to set up more than two CMS collections. Next, we're going to move over to Webflow and we're going to keep our focus on the number of items and the number of collections that you're allowed on the different plans. So just the same as Framer, Webflow has a free plan which does offer some basic support for the CMS. But again, this doesn't offer custom domains. So for the vast majority of use cases, this is probably not going to be relevant. And again, just the same as with Framer, the most affordable plan doesn't offer any support for the CMS. So at $14 a month when billed yearly, Webflow Webflow's basic plan allows for no collections and no items. The next plan up for Webflow is the CMS plan. The CMS plan costs $23 a month when billed yearly. And the CMS plan allows you to build a website with up to 2000 CMS items across 20 CMS collections. So while this offers a lot more items and collections than Framer's basic plan, it does come at a slightly higher cost. Webflow's most premium plan is the business plan, and you can actually adapt the pricing of this plan based on your needs. The maximum number of CMS items on the business plan is 20,000. And when you select this option, the cost goes to $89 a month when paid yearly. On top of this, no matter which quota you go for, the plan limits you to 40 CMS collections. So if you need more than this, you're going to need to get in touch with them for a custom solution. Next, let's take a look at Wix Studio. Now Wix Studio actually offers support for the CMS across all plans. So even if you need to choose the cheapest option, you still have support for CMS. What's more, Wix Studio has just upgraded their collections limits to 1000 for every single plan, which is far higher than we've seen with any other option. With a quota limit of a thousand CMS collections, this opens up Wix Studio to really large scale content driven websites. Wix Studio offers several pricing categories exactly as Webflow and Framer do. Wix Studio's cheapest option costs just nine pounds a month and offers full support for the CMS with up to 1,500 CMS items allowed. For an extra five pounds a month, you can upgrade to the standard plan, which increases the quota limit to 4,000 CMS items. The next plan up is the plus plan costing 21 pounds a month and Wix Studio have actually just increased the quota limit from 10,000 
to 20,000 CMS items. Wix Studio's most premium plan is the Elite plan. The Elite plan costs £119 a month and is the first option I've seen to offer up to half a million CMS items. So if you're working with a client with a large scale content driven website that needs up to a thousand CMS collections and up to half a million CMS items, then this is definitely the option for you. While the Elite plan might be more affordable to large scale businesses, the cheaper options still offer fantastic support for CMS on on Wix Studio. So if you're a creator or blogger and you want to start creating online, Wix Studio is genuinely a really great option, especially if you need lots and lots of content on your site. So aside from quota limits in terms of the number of items and collections you're allowed, what else plays into a good CMS? Well, you need to be able to build something custom that suits what your design style needs, right? So if you've got a specific project, you need to be able to customize the CMS collection pages. For example, if you're running a blog, you need to be able to make your blog posts look exactly as you want to. Framer allows you to to build and design with ease. Whether you're a designer or developer, you should find Framer a little bit easier to use than some of the other options. However, compared with say Wix Studio, it does have a little bit more of a learning curve, but is still very accessible and very customizable. Of the three, Webflow definitely has the highest barrier for entry. While tools like Framer are easy to design with and are definitely oriented around web designers, Webflow is definitely built for developers. There are some options for dragging and dropping in pre-built sections, but if you want something really custom that you built yourself, it just takes that little bit longer to learn Webflow, but when you do, it's incredibly powerful. Finally, and in my opinion, without a doubt, the most intuitive tool to use, no matter where you're at, is Wix Studio. So if you are a designer or developer, you should find Wix Studio really intuitive to use. So while all three of the tools are really flexible and allow custom designs, you'll probably find it easier and faster to iterate site designs with Wix Studio. So the next thing to talk about, and I briefly touched on this, is how easy it is for you to actually hand over a finished website to your client. So client handover is really important. The easier this goes, the better you're going to look for your clients and the easier the flow is going to be on their side for them to continue to grow their website. Now, especially with websites focused around a CMS, you want to focus on something that can help your clients continue to grow their site even when you finish with it. Now, that might not be specific to your use case. You might be continuing to work with your client and continuing to grow their blogs or their CMS collections yourself. But a great thing to consider is which tool offers the best solutions for your clients to continue to grow their websites themselves. So let's start with Framer and while Framer allows you to build really custom, attractive, animated and interactive websites with ease, client handover is not the smoothest of processes. With Framer you have to hand your clients a remix link which allows them to copy your project over to their own account. Alternatively they can set up the project in their own account and invite you as a collaborator. While this works there are costs associated with adding collaborators to your project which aren't necessarily the most transparently explained to the client. So when a client copies a project over to their own account, if they need you to come back in to help them, it's going to cost them more money monthly. That said, the ability to use Remix links to share projects across Framer is actually really useful. And although it's not necessarily the best for client handover, it allows you to share projects really effectively. Once the client has been handed the project, the next step is to discuss how easy it is for them to make edits themselves or to add CMS collections. Now, while there is a CMS section within the Framer platform that allows you to just solely focus on adding, editing and creating creating CMS items, it's still within the main frame platform. So there isn't a sort of dedicated area that you can send your clients to edit CMS collections. They need to actually log in and access the project in its full form. Now, the reason I say this is because Webflow and Wix Studio both offer support to help your clients edit sections of the site without having to worry about breaking or corrupting how the site is looking. So accessibility for your clients in terms of making those changes to the CMS is definitely something that Webflow and Wix Studio excel at when compared to Framer. This is great for those clients who have absolutely no web knowledge and just want to make those small tweaks and changes without worrying about you know breaking the website's design. When it comes to ease of handover and the ability for your clients to make edits to the site themselves, Wix Studio is definitely the best option. With role-based permissions and client-specific access, you can specify web designers and clients to make sure that everyone's getting access to the right things. Finally, again, whether it's for you as a website designer or whether it's for your clients taking their first steps into their new website, it's important to know which tool is the easiest to learn and which has the best resources for new users. Now Framer is relatively new in the space of published websites so it worked for a long time as a prototyping tool but to actually publish and build functional websites for Framer it's relatively new as a feature compared with the other options. So as for educational resources Framer's got some great content out there but at the moment it's still quite limited while it grows. Webflow on the other hand have a fantastic library of resources some of the best tutorials I've ever seen for web design have come from Webflow themselves. Webflow University is a great thing to check out whether you plan on using Webflow or not. Finally, Wix Studio has
has a really extensive resource library with Wix Studio Academy and lots and lots of tutorials out there. Beyond that, it's also super easy to pick up Wix Studio and start using it. So of the three, Wix Studio is probably the easiest to pick up for new designers and for your clients. So on the whole, all three offer different approaches to a content management system and all do a really good job in slightly different ways. Framer allows you to build really interactive animated websites that look great even through to those individual CMS item pages. Webflow, in my opinion, do a really great job of allowing content managers and writers to edit the page without affecting the design. However, on the whole, Wig Studio seems the best option all round for me with the ability for clients to quickly learn, the role-based permissions, meaning that you can access the right bits as well as your clients, and the enormous quota limits. The amount of posts that you could have in your blog or the amount of collections that you could have on one site is something that's not matched by any of the other choices I've mentioned.